Okay, I'm Richard Raffin and I'm going to show you how to cut beads and I've got a piece of damp box elder here um, and uh, these are the beads which I put up uh, which are for face work this is not the way you cut beads on spindles um, I've got a, a half inch spindle gouge here which I'm going to use to rough down this blank and what I need is to uh, just get a uh, a gentle curve or a straight line to start with. So just get the bark off and the rubbish. off the end otherwise all the end grain can splinter out and then across the bottom I'm going to use the left wing and the tool pretty well on its side to start with and then I roll it gently into the cut so the flute's coming out at around 45 degrees here and I usually do the outsides or the roughing down with a shallow gouge because it's a, it's a less expensive tool than the bowl gouges Uh, I use a spindle gouge always to cut a foot um, or, be, or little beads, any kind of detailing. So lining the bevel up with where I want to go, which is straight in. Handles down, raise the handle, pivot the tool in, and then right on its side at the end, then I can drop the handle and take the tool handle around in circles and that gives me the, these little beads. I always think with this that uh, what's uh, important is not so much necessarily the roundness of the beads, although these are pretty round. It's more or less whatever you're doing, do the same thing and then you get a pattern, uh, which is quite nice. Now these are made by, uh, we'll take that lot away and start again. And this time I'm going to use the uh, the 3 8 spindle guard which is generally my preferred tool for this so the rest is just about centre height here but it's not too crucial uh, I use my finger on the rest as a kind of fulcrum and the tool starts right on its side I take the tool into the wood and then rotate it very slightly as I come out brush the surface and keep it at that angle as I come back into the wood and then pivot it on the nose and do the same again and every time at the end of every cut you need to move the tool along the rest because otherwise if I go from there whoops, to there suddenly you can't do it, You've, all the angles are wrong so you come in to there on its side, take the handle round in a circle, along the rest, around in a circle, that was rolling the tool too early, just being a bit careless with it, but I think it's rather like having an oar in a rollock on a boat. Um, so the tool is pivoting in one point on the rest as you make the, the bead. So we'll take those off again, just do them again. That's a shear cut and it's nice shaving so the bevel isn't rubbing so the surface isn't that smooth but if I'm cutting a foot I'll often cut the foot with the 3 8 spindle gouge in there on its side at the end and then drop the handle and just 
all the tool around and if I want a bead at the bottom of a bow wall and come in down the wall tool on its side at the end then the bead here is cut the tool on its side pivot it in the corner on the nose of the tool and take the handle around in a circle and that will give you the bead there that's a bit chunky that bead so you can make it into two going across the bottom it's slightly different Let's smooth up the surface with the left wing then roll the tool over have the bevel riding and take roll the tool slightly anti-clockwise pick up a shaving which is coming off uh, really off just above the nose of the tool now to make a bead in here I'm going to pivot the edge into the wood so you can see you get the uh, the grain is kind of lifted up but it's a cleanly cut on the left and then to make get rid of the frizz just come back a little arcing cut from the other side the frizz at the bottom there of the groove and then to make a bead I need to have the bevel riding to the left of that groove and just get over the top if I want to make a big bead in the middle I can just start at the center and pivot the edge back bevel riding more or less on the middle of that little bead and into the middle right coming up the side again have a the uh, finger there as a kind of stop into the wood Now a little bead, you don't move the handle, take the handle round in a small circle. If you want a bigger bead, just drift it around in a bigger circle. And of course they're great fun, not quite as difficult as they look. And the big problem then tends to be that you want to smother everything in beads. But it's often a good way of getting uh, uh, cleanly cut wood when the grain's not working that easily. Um, so it's a nice little technique to have. Happy practicing.